Hello everyone, welcome back to Now I Know. Today's video is an updated version of one of the old video uh, on stem cell, cell potency that we have talked about. Now there are a lot more terms when it comes to stem cells and in this video I have tried to address all of them at least to give a basic idea about what each term means. Now when it comes to stem cells, uh, there are two properties of a stem cell that we know that it can self renew and it can differentiate into a specialized cell. So when it comes to stem cells, we can classify them into two ways based on their ability to differentiate or from their origin, okay, the source from where they have been derived. Now let's first concentrate about based on their differentiation and this is where the cell potency will come into picture. And to understand this concept, I want to give you an analogy. Imagine when we were kids, we had the ability or the possibility to become anything that we want, right? Doctor, teacher, computer engineer, designer, architect, anything that you wanted, you could become, right? The possibilities are endless. Whatever you want to be, you can become. Then you go into school and you develop interest for certain subjects and then you narrow it down to maybe arts, commerce, science. As you further go on in college, you will again decide, like, let's say for example, I'm from science, I would talk about uh, microbiology, biotechnology, zoologist, bot botanist, I will again, you know, decide what particular sub field I want to go in. Then when I go for PhD, I will again narrow it down to a specific topic. I'm becoming more and more specialized towards that particular field. The story of stem cell is something similar. It starts with possibility to become anything and everything and it ends with being a very, very specialized cell committed to a particular function. Okay, now keep this in mind and try to understand this. It should be easy now. So the story begins with an egg that is fertilized, right? So we have a zygote that is made. Now this zygote, or fertilize egg this will start dividing and from this is where you and I have come if you think about it it's amazing to think how I have come from this one single cell you know that's that's wonderful so this zygote is what is going to give rise to a whole organism an entire organism right and that is what is an example of totipotent cell toti or totus means whole. So a zygote is an example of totipotent cell. Now to call it a stem cell, totipotent stem cell. So technically speaking, self-renewal part of uh, stem cell does not, uh, does not imply here. But zygote is an example of totipotent cell or totipotent stem cell. You might even read some places omnipotent stem cell or totipotent stem cell, whatever it is, the zygote that we are talking about because this is the only cell that has ability to create an entire organism. Now, once the zygote will start dividing, it will reach to a blastosis stage. In this blastosis stage, you have this inner cell mass in the blastosis, the inner cell mass that has the ability to become any of the three germ layers, right? So this particular mass of cell is the source of pluripotent stem cells. Pluri means several, not all because placenta doesn't come from inner cell mass. So it does not give rise to an everything, but several, that means all the germ layers, any of the cells, can come from pluripotent stem cells. So inner cell mass of blastocysts is an example of pluripotent stem cells. So all the cell types, more than 200 different cell types that we have in our body, all of them comes from inner cell mass. So that is an example of pluripotent stem cells. Now as the cell divides and become more and more specialized is when multipotent stem cells comes into picture. Now, let's say for example, 
we talk about uh, from bone marrow the hematopoietic stem cells or the mesenchymal stem cells now these are the cells they are going to become into a limited number of cell types for example the hematopoietic stem cell from bone marrow can give rise to all the blood cells but it cannot form the nerve cells right so now the multipotent stem cells multi here is many okay so they are more restricted or limited to particular cell type the best example is hematopoietic stem cell from bone marrow that can give rise to all the blood cells or mesenchymal cells giving rise to bone cells muscle cells fat cells and so on so this is now an example of multipotent stem cells as you go further into uh, you know more specialization as the differentiation further Uh, goes on let's say for example i take example of this hematopoietic stem cell if you remember we talked about hematopoietic stem cells in blood cell formation and we saw that it differentiates into two lineages myeloid and lymphoid lineages right and those we call as progenitor cells right and the lymphoid progenitor cells for example is what gives rise to t lymphocytes b lymphocytes and natural killer cells rest all of the blood cells would come from myeloid progenitor cell right so now this particular progenitor cell is only committed to give rise to particular number or particular very closely related types of cells right so these progenitor cells are called oligo potent stem cells from multipotent would come the oligopotent where their specialization is furthermore uh, restricted the types of cells that it can give rise to is particularly now restricted their capacity to differentiate into different types of cell has gone down now and from this oligopotent we would come to unipotent stem cells the term itself says uni means only one or single so a type of stem cells that give rise to only a single type of cell it is committed and very specialized for that particular cell only let's say for example you take any adult tissue i take muscle tissue and take stem cell from that it can differentiate only in muscle cell right for skin it will be the same any tissue that you take you take the stem cell from that mature tissue they will be specialized to become that particular cell only and that is an example or that is what is unipotent stem cells so based on the type of their ability to differentiate you have all these different terms that we use in terms of stem cells now if this much is clear the origin is easy to understand basically we talk about two types of stem cells embryonic and adult or somatic stem cells now looking at this whole cell potency uh, flow chart you can understand where the embryonic stem cells are derived from right what do you call embryonic stem cells a multipotent no unipotent no only pluripotent is what comes from the embryo right from the inner cell mass it is only pluripotent stem cells that has come so what are the embryonic stem cells they are the pluripotent stem cells that comes from the inner cell mass of the blastocyst but when it comes to adult or somatic stem cells they are generally found or they are the ones that are involved in uh, the repair system in the body or to make the cells of that particular tissue so any stem cells that are derived from mature tissues this this can be even in child this can be even in adult but they are derived from mature tissues they are derived from somatic cell all these stem cells they are all adult stem cells or you also read somewhere somatic stem cells right so multipotent yes oligopotent yes unipotent yes so these are all adult stem cells 
when it comes to embryonic stem cells remember they are the pluripotent stem cells now you know from where embryonic stem cell comes and when it comes to adult stem cells it will be the mature tissues from where they are derived so multipotent stem cells is an example of adult or somatic stem cells now you may also read or might have heard about this umbilical cord stem cells so these are nothing but the stem cells that are derived from the umbilical cord uh, after the birth this umbilical cord or placenta has been discarded but it's found that this umbilical cord has it's a rich source of multipotent stem cells so the umbilical cord stem cells are nothing but multipotent stem cells it's based on the source from where it is derived it is derived from umbilical cord but what kind of a stem cells they are they are multipotent stem cells now one of the very interesting uh, term that you might have heard about is the induced pluripotent stem cells so the term itself says they are pluripotent stem cells but they are induced they are not naturally um in the pluripotent form but they are induced to be pluripotent artificially okay the example of this would be uh, in lab you take any kind of specialized stem cells and with you know doing some reprogramming in the gene we can actually take this specialized stem cell back into the pluripotent phase just like how we get in embryo so these are not naturally pluripotent they are specialized stem cells let's say for example i take stem cell from muscle muscle stem cells which are specialized i reprogram them to go back into pluripotent stem cell this stage i take it back to pluripotent stage now it has ability to become anything so what happens with uh, wh why we have to do this when it comes to pluripotent stem cells it is very very useful in case of regenerative medicine but there are a lot of ethical issues when it comes to taking pluripotent because the source is embryo but with ipsc when you induce them artificially in the lab there is no embryo involved you take the specialized stem cells and you reprogram it to become pluripotent again so they are induced to become pluripotent it's totally a game changer in case of regenerative medicine so that is what is ipsc induced pluripotent stem cells sounds really easy but of course it's not this easy in practicality but it is a very very promising uh, aspect or very very promising in case of regenerative medicine now there is an infographic that i have made about this stem cell cell potency uh, explaining all the types with the example i will insert a snippet here if you want to see the details or if you want more such uh, power packed infographics Uh, you can visit my Instagram at Rupal Wogia. So that's all for now. All these uh, terminologies are essentially what you need to know when it comes to stem cells. And I hope this video was helpful and it was easy to understand. I will see you next time. Until then, keep learning.